Your amen is not proving it. Shout your believing hallelujah. And I learned things to do with loyalty from that message from God's servant. It helped me a lot because I was young in ministry. I just joined ministry full time. And that tape did a lot of good for me and my life and ministry. Praise the Lord. I honor you servant of God. Thank you so much. God used you to prepare me early. Also together with us we have uh, pastors, other men of God. We have Pastor Timothy and Pastor Simon all the way from Chogoria Faith Celebration Ministry. Are you happy? Come on, let's appreciate God for the men of God here. And of course, other pastors that have been sitting around, we thank God for you. Thank you for uh, suspending some of your busy schedule to be here with us. The Lord will never, uh, of course, leave us the same all of us. We also have Pastor Alex together with us, who is working powerfully here. Come on, let's appreciate Jesus. Hallelujah. On behalf of God's servant, my father in faith and ministry, and our mommy, I want to take this privilege to welcome the man of God, even this apostle, you know, is a global minister. Praise the Lord. Now you will put your hands together for apostle Dr. Richard Mayanja. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Come on, appreciate Jesus as he comes. Come on, give the Lord a praise. in his wonderful praises. The Lord is faithful. Thank you, Lord. Worship the Lord where you are. Open your mouth and worship him. Oh, 
You are the spirit of God. You are the spirit of power. You are the spirit of wisdom. You are the spirit of might. You are the spirit of cancer. You are the spirit of understanding. Come descend on this mountain. Incubate this place. Release the sevenfold anointing upon us this evening tonight in Jesus mighty name Amen Come on Hallelujah You may take your seat if you can Tell the person next to you that you are blessed when you sit next to me We are working with a message that is uh, very, very important. How many of you are not here during lunchtime? Lift up your hand, I would like to see. You are not with us. How many of you are here? So you know, so for the sake of those who are not here, I'll give back the nuggets we taught over the lunch hour so, so that uh, we can catch up. A lot of people are still coming. But uh, because we, we want to finish this today, we need to start, right? Are you ready? Can I see your Bible? Shout, this is my Bible. Tell your neighbor, you are not permitted to buy a new dress before you buy a new Bible. There are some people who have Bibles that are beyond repair. But they have a shoe made in Italy. You need to, to honor God. Even the Bible you use speaks volumes to God. Don't say, you know, when I got saved, this was my Bible. I cannot part with it. Let that one go in the archives. I have Bibles in my archives. But I like buying every version of the Bible. When I'm doing my Bible study, every version is available. Every version. If you find me doing my research, you can lose your head. Because a lot of stuff is available. A lot. Quite a lot. Amen. We are discussing something that is very uh, powerful when you get to know this message that means you will never miss your visitation very very important to know we started on this message and we only picked one principle but I'm going to run um, I believe the anointing of Elijah is on me now so that I will run and overtake chariots because I have got to finish this today. And you're going to do me a favor that you'll be writing like you are the one who wrote the Old Testament. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. You can imagine when God was speaking to Moses. Moses, get yourself a book in the beginning. God created the earth and the heaven. And the man was writing. That kind of anointing is on you now. Because we are going to run. Tell your neighbor we are going to run. Beautiful. How to know it is God's season for you. We try to customize it to personalize. Eden, we said how do I know that it is God's season for me. May I say to you that season is the key to breakthrough. The Bible teaches that the Lord makes everything beautiful in its season or in its time. You don't need to operate out of time. The Bible says that in the fullness of time, Jesus was born. 
God operates in seasons and times and he has ordained a season for all of you who are seated here. And when that season comes, whatever you've been crying for just happens. That is when uh, destiny smiles at you because you are in your season. In fact, some people you admire, they are not better than you. The difference between them and you is that you are not yet in your season. They are in their season. Have you heard what I've said? The difference between them and you is simple. They are in their season. You are not yet in your season. So you don't need to envy them because your day is also coming. Your season is also coming. And once that happens, things will change. Things will change. Before I became this kind of preacher, I used to see preachers say, The Lord spoke to me when I was flying from Chicago. And I was like, wow, they are flying. Will I ever fly? I didn't know that when I would start flying, it would be non-stop. And actually, I'm one person who has not gotten used to planes. Because every time I'm so sober and I always think faster. Every time I sit on the flight, I'm like, boy, we are closer to heaven. <laughs> and the enemy knows how to throw thoughts what if anything happens here <laughs> such thoughts run through me the people that I used to admire now have flown more than so many of them and I don't take flights as luxury to me flying is not a luxury because I don't enjoy it it is just a means of transport it moves me faster. You, you, you can't enjoy flights. There is a time I made a vow to God. We were flying from a certain country. And then as I think 20 minutes prior to our arrival, we found a turbulence. Gosh, I felt like this. Everybody, even an Indian, I saw him praying. Everybody was praying. There's one man who surprised me he was a pastor or he was a preacher. So he was behind us. He switched to tongues. He never bothered who is there. So I heard him speak in tongues like, hey. And then inside I was like, God, we are going to die. So I had some good money. Tell your neighbor, God is a dealer. Tell your neighbor, God is a dealer. I had some good money and I said, you know what, Lord? I vow. <laughs> that if we land safely, all this money is yours. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. God has a sense of humor. I think three minutes later, the plane stabilized. And then I was like, it is my turn. That is when the devil reminds you, but it was supposed to stabilize. You vowed faster. No. <laughs> the thing is this. The people are better than you. They are better than you because they are in their season. Not because of anything else. They have arrived, you are on the way. But you will also arrive. Amen. You will get there. Tell your neighbor, I will get there. So we discovered these powerful signposts. That lead to new seasons in our lives. I won't go back into those details. Because somebody who is hearing me might shout these words, DVD. 
I didn't hear you. DVD, CD, VCD. Any D, other D that you know you can also mention it. You get a message on the table because we need to run. Are you ready to run now? How do I know? It is God's season for me. Number one, we said the first botany that shows that you have entered into a new season is called opportunity. I took a whole hour discussing that. That every time God is about to usher you into a new season, he presents you an opportunity. That one is too long. I'm not going to go through it. But VCD, DVD, CD, UD. <laughs> when every God is changing your seasons, there are signals that show. I want to warn you that when God has left a place, leave. Don't pray for the place. Leave. Because our lives come uh, in seasons. Our, our breakthroughs come in seasons. God orchestrates seasons for every man and woman who is seated there. One time Elijah was being fed by ravens and drinking the water from the brook. And suddenly the Lord dries the brook. And God said it is time to move. Anointed as he was, he never laid hands on the brook. Tell your neighbor, don't lay hands on the brook. Move on. Because most of us are used to the status quo. We don't, want like, we don't like change. We brought a guy the other day from the village. Uh, and uh, we wanted him to experience what people experience when they are in the city. So he began to complain that, you know, the problem in the city is that you buy everything. You buy food. You buy water. You see, I have my tomatoes from my shamba. I mean, he tried to reason things that looked like they are making a lot of sense. But they, would have, they were supposed to make a lot of sense to his fellow villagers. We knew... We knew where we were taking him. So we brought him to the city. When it started raining, he said, Now you see, I have to go back to the village to do what? Plant tomatoes. He went and came back. Years later, we are asking him, Do you still want to go to the village? He said, Who wants to go to the village? Every one of us fear the unknown. When children are born, they come crying. Because they were so comfortable. Where they were. But if they tell you now to go back in your mother's womb, you will curse. You will curse. Whenever God is changing your season. Hallelujah. Move with him. Whenever the cloud moved, Israel moved. When the cloud stopped, they stopped. That means you don't go ahead of God. You only move with him. The worst thing that can happen to man is when he looks back and he looks at the seasons he was supposed to enter into and he never entered into them. All the money that you are looking for is in the ordained season that God has for you. So was told by Samuel that when these signs come on you, do as occasion demands because it is season for you. God is with you. So God will always present an opportunity for you. 
when you embrace the opportunity, it will open a new season for you. An opportunity to interpret fellow's dream. Asher Joseph into his new season. He came pr from prison thinking he was going back. He didn't know that that is the last day he will ever see the prison doors. He came thinking he's simply going to interpret a dream. He didn't know that he was coming to become the second most powerful man in the most powerful empire of that day. I said over lunch hour that whenever God is changing your seasons, he will never give you all the details. The details you are going to learn them when you obey. God will never sit you down and say, you see, Joseph, from here you are going to the palace of fellow. And then suddenly when you arrive there, you'll be interpreting dreams. And after you interpret the dreams, he's going to choose you. No, God does not go into those details. The details, we discover them as we obey. He's a God who desires to be obeyed. Because if God goes into those details, all of us, we will obey. Because we know where we're going. If he tries to explain to you what will happen to you, you know, you will obey. But as you walk, you discover that you are more than what people thought you were. God never told Elijah that I will, when the day you will get to heaven, I will send my vehicles. Chariots will land on earth. To carry you. He, he doesn't go into those details. If you are waiting for God to go into the details. You will wait until tomorrow. He will never do that. He will tell you do this. The moment you obey that. You discover that he was speaking beyond. He was taking you beyond that instruction. He was taking you beyond where, what you thought he was speaking. He was taking you to a bigger door. Are you hearing me? The second now I've started. Tell your neighbor, fasten your seat belts. You didn't talk like you are a prophet. Look at your neighbor and put on a very hard face, harder than that of Idi Amin, and say, fasten your seat belt. Don't smile like me. You are smiling when you are telling the guy put on a hard face you see they, they, are, they fear you this is very important are you get are you ready after opportunity the next signal that God is taking you into a new season is you lose interest in your current season You lose interest in your current season. Amazing. Now this is going to help you a lot. A lot. Tell your neighbor the Lord is going to help me tonight. Everybody is excited about the place but you. Think about it. Every time you, for example, you are working in a company. All right. You are working in this company when you came 10 years ago. You were very excited about a company. But all of, a, all of a sudden, something comes on you. And you feel very uncomfortable. You are the highest paid person in that company. Yet, you would want to leave. You just feel like, no, I don't feel comfortable. They do not ignore those promptings. Because they are indicators that God is opening a new door. You just feel uncomfortable. Everybody is admiring to be like you, but you don't admire yourself. When you tell them you are leaving, they're wondering why. Whenever God is ushering you into a new season, He will send a spirit that will make you lose interest in your current season. Hebrews chapter 11. Somebody say, you lose interest in your current season. Verse 24 says, 
By faith when Moses. By faith Moses when he was come to years. Are you hearing that? Refused to be called the son of fellow's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Moses, you remember all of you that he was picked from the river bank of the Nile. In the Bible says that he grew up in the palace. He was educated. He got the best education of the day. He was such a giant in the, in, 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 the, in the kingdom of Egypt. Some historians suggest that he was actually supposed to be the next king of Egypt. Satan, the deal was sealed. But he was so sensitive enough that God took him there for a season. Most of us don't know that. When people come into me, in my life to, as my protégés, there are people who never stay with me longer. God allows them to come in my hands for a season. Because he knows that I have something that I can give to them. Then after they get it, let them go. Whisper to your neighbor, why don't you possess the gift of goodbye? I never curse anybody when they leave me. Maybe they got what brought them in. But also there are some who leave before they get it. It is possible. <laughs> it is a double-edged sword. There are those who leave after they got, have gotten it. There are others who leave prematurely. What shows that they left prematurely is the way they suffer. Are you hearing me? Moses, with all this opulence, the class, he sensed he was discontented. He sensed that the season for this palace is over. You can imagine the day he left to go and live with the brethren, bricklayers, those who are suffering down there, imagine what they thought. Is he not crazy? But the season was over. That's why when it comes to our season, sometimes you don't need to listen to anybody. Listen to your inner man. Listen to the direction of the inner man. Because if you listen to Moses, you will go back to that palace. Your brethren will tell you, why are you leaving? Don't you see how we are suffering? God took Moses in the palace of the king for these reasons. One, God knew that Moses would be the first person to introduce scripture on the earth. He was supposed to write the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and the Deuteronomy. He was the one who was going to write the laws that God will ever give to a human being. Therefore, he needed the best education. And he could not get the best education if he stays with his relatives. Because they are slaves. They, they don't go to school. So he allows him to enter the palace and get that. When that is over, get out. Because that palace was not destiny. He took him out because his season for that place was over. You need to know when the season for the place is over. And how do you know? You know it by the discontent you feel in your spirit. Because as long as you stay in that place, you will never be a blessing you will always complain daily. In fact, I have noticed that some people keep on complaining. Sometimes if you are mature, you need to tell them, but I think your time here is over. 
not in a bad way. I'm telling you the truth. You cannot grow a place. When your season is over and you begin to feel discontent, instead of complaining, go to God in prayer and make this one prayer. Lord, give me direction. And he will do that. Now I'm talking as an experienced man of God. I know that that is what I've done and it works all the time. Amen. It works all the time. Discontent. You feel uncomfortable. You don't like everything that is taking place. They try to convince you. You don't see what he is saying. So Moses had to live by faith. Out. Because now God was ushering him into a new season. Now he has gotten secular education. Now he's coming into priesthood. Which he could not get in Pharaoh's palace. He has to be betrayed by the brethren so that his push to the other side of the desert that he can meet a man prepared by God called Jethro that he can teach him how to order his steps in the house of God. God was ushering him into a new season so that after that he can come back and stand and say the Lord says let my people go. Whenever a new season is knocking at your door, you begin to hate the current season. That dissatisfaction you are feeling in your spirit is non demonic. That is not the devil at work. So stop binding demons because they will not be bound. You are trying to bind God. When will you finish binding God? Don't waste your time. That dissatisfaction you're experiencing is an indicator that heaven is knocking at your door for a new season. You got it. Did you? Clap for yourselves. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You lose interest. In your current season. They are paying you well. Even those of you who are in the marketplace. You need to know that. When God is taking you to another company. He makes you lose interest. In the current company. The other workers are happy. They wish they were like you. And you are like please. I don't even see what you see. Game over. Whenever you feel like that, I suggest to you, right? I suggest that you begin to seek God for direction. Give me direction. Number three. These signposts will show you that the Lord is up to something new. The third signpost that will show you that it is your season. You sense an unusual agency to pray. You will sense a certain burden. I'm going to show you the mistake that we make. Nobody senses what you sense, but you do sense an unusual burden to pray. Because in prayer, God wants you to give birth to a new season. You sense an unusual burden. And here's the challenge that we have in church circles. 
When people begin to feel like that, they begin to complain why other people are not praying and I'm the only one praying. You are the one who is about to enter a new season. Leave me alone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is your time. It is not our time. You begin to sense what the rest of the members of the body do not feel. Now the problem is here you begin to criticize your bishop, you criticize the pastors, you criticize everybody. The bishop doesn't pray. Can you imagine I'm the only one who stays in church in prayer? Yes, you are the only one who is supposed to stay on your knees because your season is about to open. Tell your neighbor, leave me alone. It is your season. It's not mine. When mine will be about to come, I will feel what you are feeling. No more. Every one of us has to go through that way. That is the way to go. You will always sense an unusual agency to pray. In Exodus chapter 3, God spoke to Moses. Wow. I feel his presence. In chapter 3, let's read verse 7. Give me scriptures the moment I mention them. Because I will not open since you are opening for me. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard, mark those words if you have a Bible that speaks like that. And I have heard what? They, they are cry. This is the time he's hearing the cry. He has not heard the cry 430 years. He didn't hear. But when the time was about to come, they lifted their voices. They cried. They sensed something in their spirit. And they sensed smoke in the supernatural. And God said, I have heard now. Come. I have decided to come down. They are cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Go down. And I am come down. To deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And to bring them up. Out of that land. And a good land. And a large. And unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And a place of the Canaanites. And the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jews. Before he spoke that, they felt that they needed to cry to him. It is the cry that ushered them into a new season. He said, I have heard their cry. Whenever it is your season, let me tell you, there are times I pray. There are times I pray. And I'm like, am I the one who prayed like that or someone else? You pray like a dying prophet. I pray until I feel like my entire body is leaving my spirit. But when I enter into that season, that kind of burden and the way I pray, it ceases. I try to do it again. It never comes back. Because it only comes when you are back. To be ushered into a new season. God will put a burden on your heart. You, when everybody's leaving, you lie down here. You cry and everybody thinks you are mad. Let them think you are mad. They will think like that until you enter in a new season. Then they will know God was up to something with this person. You sense an unusual urgency to pray. In 1 Kings chapter 18, we read that when it was about to, when the rain was about to come down, Elijah went to Mount Carmel and he put his head between his knees and he prayed like never before. He never prayed like that again. He was praying because the season of rain was about to come every time 
God wants to usher you into a new season, he puts a burden of prayer that is unusual in your spirit. But you want everybody to go with you. Never. It never works. We don't feel what you are feeling. When Jesus was about to receive a name above every name, the Bible says he picks three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to pray with him. They were like, Lord, it is your season. It is not our season. When they went to the mountain, instead of praying, they slept. That is what is going to happen. Are you hearing, Martin? It happens like that. This guy I've known for many years. Hey, how many? I can't even remember. He didn't have a body, then he put a ball on a body. I meet him in every town. Sit down. Every time, every time you think somebody's going to stand with you during your season, you are lying to yourself. You, if the Lord carried them to the mountain and they slept, Jesus Christ, who came from heaven, <laughs> what they would do to you? <laughs> they will not just sleep. They will sleep and snore to prove to you that we don't feel what you are feeling. It is your time. It is not our time. So he comes back. He says, guys, you can't even tarry with me for an hour. He left. He came back. We sleep. He says, okay, I know now. Better sleep. He carried the wrong people. When he came up full of power because he's about to go to the other side of glory, Peter wakes up so much, so powerful, so full of the flesh. When Jesus is performing miracles, Peter says, where's my sword? Those are the guys you are carrying with you to stand with you in prayer. He says, they have come to fight. Ah, the ear is off. Don't carry people with you or cut off people's ears. When it is your season, it is you who is feeling it. Two people can be in the house, the husband and the wife. But when it is time for the wife to deliver, the husband does not feel the birth pains. Because he's not the one who's going to do to deliver. It is your miracle, it's not mine. Shut up. <laughs> Cry alone. <laughs> hey, you love me. <laughs> Are you getting it? There are two people. The only thing the guy can do is to take you to hospital. Sometimes in Africa, they don't allow them to go into the labor world. In Europe, they can allow you to go. But if it were me, I wouldn't go. I don't like that. I can think you are going to die and begin to prophesy other things. So, listen to me. Listen to me. The pain you are feeling is not what we are feeling. The reason why you are feeling it is because you are about to deliver. You are about to deliver something that is so powerful. An unusual agency to pray. Let me give you this scripture free of charge. Uh, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. And chapter 2. Amazing scriptures. There was this prominent family in Israel called the family of Mr. Elkanah. Mr. Elkanah loved the Lord. He had two wives. Those days they were allowed. This time, these days I don't allow. Hey. Ah. Two wives. Penina and who? Hannah. 
The scripture says that every year they used to go to Shiloh to sacrifice to the Lord every year. And every year they would carry offerings to the Lord. It happened every year. But it came to press that the Lord wanted to usher Anna into a new season. Listen what happened. This one particular year when she came, she felt an unusual agency to pray. It was not her first time to come there. No. She used to come there. But because now it was her season, there was a burden released from the supernatural. Hey, you are safe. You are safe. You are safe. Ha! You are safe. Now, this time around, now this is going to teach you a lot. This was not her first time to come to the house of the Lord. But this particular year, she felt something strange in her spirit. When everybody was leaving, she said they can go. The Bible says she stayed behind. She prayed that day. She took it to another level. She prayed until even the priest in the house could not understand. Don't you think Apostle Mayanja will, will understand? No, I will not understand. The priest thought that she was drunk. And she said, sir, I'm pouring my heart before God. She felt something that she had never felt before. An unusual agency to pray. Do not ignore those promptings. Every time you feel like you need to pray, even when you are eating, leave the dining table immediately. Because heaven is up to something new. Leave immediately. There are times I walk in the house. Immediately I walk in. I feel like I need to be alone. And I sense that God wants to do something new. I, didn't, I don't need to call everybody. Because they don't sense what I'm sensing. That day, Hannah prayed. And Eli looked at her and said, Woman, may God grant your petition. It was not his first time to see her. They used to meet there every year. But this particular year, heaven was knocking. That is how heaven knocks. It puts a burden on you. And you want to put the same burden on us. We don't feel what you feel. It is your time to eat chicken sausages. It is not our time. To eat like that. We are still struggling. God is ushering into a new season. When she prayed. The scripture says. From that day. Hannah was sad no more. The following scriptures say. She gave birth to a prophet called Samuel. Who anointed the two greatest kings of Israel. Are you hearing me? How did it come to pass? Not by laying on of hands. Not every breakthrough. Hear me and hear me well. Not every breakthrough that is going to come your way. Will be prophesied by a man of God. I can prophesy it. But when it is time for it to come to pass. The burden to pray. You will just feel unusual. You will just feel uncomfortable. You just feel that you don't want to be with us. You want to be alone. And let me tell you guys, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen very well. When somebody tells you I want to be alone, don't try to spiritualize it. Don't try to reason that person out. Leave them alone. 
you might receive a curse because your head is not sensitive to the moves of God. When you hear somebody say, it doesn't matter whether she's your wife. Are you hearing me? Do you hear me? Eh? Yes, sir. It doesn't matter. Where is she? Yeah. If she says, leave me alone. The bishop is not here. I was going to tell him that if you say, let me address the seat. If she says, <laughs> leave me alone. You know, our work with God is not collective. It is personal. Each man will stand alone before God. We will not stand as families. We will stand alone. We will answer alone. If your partner says, Shh, begin to sing alone, I surrender. <laughs> and walk away. Walk away before this thing explodes on you. Do you see Elkanah in the house? Elkanah was so funny. You know he came. Thank God that day he did not come. But prior to that he used to come and say, Hannah, what do you want? Hmm? Am I not better than seven sons? Stupid. <laughs> hey, can you imagine? This boy has many children from the other woman. Now he's talking to one who doesn't have a single child. Am I not better? That one is not a man. He's a male. This is the point. And it is your season. An unusual burden to pray. Gosh. There are things I did before I learned this. I just did them. I slept outside for three years. Every night. Every night. I never had Christmas. I never had a holiday. God was giving birth to the man you see today as apostle man. Are you hearing me? Today, if you tell me to do that, I can't. The season for that is over. Are, are you hearing me? In fact, I wonder, sometimes when I'm alone, I ask God, how, did, how could I go to a bush that I'm going to pray? Every night. You tell me to go there now. I will curse you. Because I'm scared of going to a bush now. Yet then, I had special grace and boldness. That is what happens. You feel like you can do it. Go ahead and do it. Give birth to your new season on your knees. We don't feel what you're feeling. Pinch your knife and tell them, we, I don't feel what you're feeling. to pray. Number four. Number one was what? Two. You lose interest in your current season. Number three. And then use your agency to pray. That one is very important. Every one of them is powerful. Number four, signpost that you are about to enter into a new season is called satanic attacks. Hmm? 
Let's cut your neighbor and tell them opposition does not mean you are out of the will of God. It means you've had a head-on collision with the devil. <laughs> Satanic attacks are indicators that a new door is opening. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 16. Uh, since you are there, let me not open mine. Verse 9. Let's read together. For a great door and effective. If, uh, let's read it again. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. And there are many adversaries. When the door is opening. What shows that the door is opening or it has opened the many adversaries? Attacks. Left, right, center. Even people you thought could not talk against you, they do. Don't cast them. Lift your eyes and look at the door that God is opening. The reason why this happens is because the enemy wants you to lift your eyes off the door that the Lord is opening. That you may concentrate on the adversaries. Not every battle you face, you are supposed to fight it. Some battles you win them by not fighting. The enemy wants you to concentrate on the people. Not on the door. A great and effective door has opened for me. How do I know? They are adversaries. Every time you sense attack from people, know that somewhere the Lord has opened a new door. Glory to God. I feel his presence. Somebody clap for his presence. The reason why nobody is helping you today it's because they are not supposed to help you. Somebody who is interested in helping you is on the way. Lift up your eyes and see the door that God has opened for you. A great and effective door has opened for me. How do I know adversaries? Satanic attack. Satanic attacks. They will attack your ministry. They will attack your wife. They will attack your children. They will attack your shop. They will attack your figure. They will. Amen. Some battles we win them by keeping quiet. Not every demon qualifies to hear from you some demons do not qualify to hear your word there are some people who do not qualify actually when people attack me some i don't even answer because if i answer them i'll make them popular they will go around saying i talked to him the other day and you know what he told me and people will say apostle mayanja answered you what did he say no, if I don't want to make them popular, if I don't want to them to remain at the same level, I bind them by silence. Uh -uh. Silence. Total silence. And they remain local. Silence. They die local. Silence. Whenever you are under severe attack, I swear to you, it is because there is a door that the enemy has seen opening. Satanic texts are prophecies. They are a prophecy 
that the enemy is scared of your next level. He has seen it. What do I supposed to do, Apostle? Lift your eyes off the attack. Go to God. Give me direction. Lord, give me direction. Give me direction. Glory to God. Give me direction. Satan wants you to concentrate on the demons. No. God wants you to concentrate on the door that he has opened. Whenever God is about to do something new, affliction will multiply. Pressure is the mother of progress. Hallelujah. Satanic attacks. Let no devil lie to you that God hates you when you attack. God loves you so much when you attack. Actually, I've learned over the years that every time I experience satanic attacks, God is not actually far away. He's so close. He's closer than the breath of my nostrils during that time. He wants me to open my eyes and see the door that is great and effectual. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, please. Chapter 7. Verse 17. Are you seeing those words? But let's read together. But when the time of the promise drew nigh. Read them again. I didn't hear you. The time of what? Did what? When it came close. What happened? The people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Uh-huh. Till another king arose which knew not Joseph. Go ahead. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and even treated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not leave. These things are happening when the promise drew When the promise drew nigh, the devil anointed another fellow to destroy this race. Because the devil might not know the time, but he knows the season. Never forget that. The devil might never know the day, but he knows the signals. And he knows that when these signs happen to a human being, it is because heaven is cooking something let's attack let us attack him when the promise drew nigh he was speaking about Israel in Egypt that when their time to be delivered came close and the devil knew that it is time for them to be delivered huh? he said I better anoint a king who never respects Joseph that I kill this race. The devil will not kill you. You will not miss your season. I prophesy you will not miss your season. You will enter every door that God desires for you to enter. You will enter that door. You will enter that door. When the promise drew the reason why you are under severe attack is because the enemy has seen that the promise is close 
Now you are quarreling, you are abusing everybody. You are all of you are devils. Get out of me. No, 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 no. Lift up your eyes from the people. Because look at the promise. It is so close. Lift your eyes from the people. Focus the promise that is so near. It has drawn nigh. You are about to break through. Tell your neighbor, instead of live great, you will be great. Instead of breakdown, you will break through. These signals are indicators that God is about to change your story to glory. Don't curse yourself. And you know that is a time we curse ourselves. A brother in Kampala served God faithfully. What happened, God wanted to lift him by giving him an inheritance from some white couple that he had never worked for. Three months prior to his breakthrough, he backslid. He started like this. He began to complain, I have served God in vain. Everybody gives testimonies that are powerful. God has never given. When you begin to develop that stupid life, let it be a prophecy to you also that God is about to answer your cry. The promise drew nigh. This happens most of the time. Jesus put it this way. That when a woman is about to deliver, she will experience back pains. When she's about to. That's what Jesus said. And you know what I'm saying. That pain that you're experiencing is about to produce power. It is about to produce power. God has your name on the table whenever you experience that. Whenever you experience satanic attacks, it is an indicator that your fire has arrived on the table of God. Glory to God. Let's see. I want to run. Number five. This is going to surprise you. But get ready. Tell your neighbor fast in your seat belt. Number five signpost that you are entering into a new season is called closed doors. Closed doors. When doors close, it is because another door has opened. I want you to know today that God doesn't open many doors. He opens one door at a time. One door at a time. The scripture teaches that I'm the way. It doesn't teach that I'm the ways. Are you getting it? Jesus said, I am the door. He did not say, I am the doors. Apostle Paul said, a great and effective door. Not great and effective doors. He opens one door at a time so that you don't get confused which one you should use. One door at a time. Close doors, whisper to your neighbor that closed doors are not missed opportunities. Before God opens a new season, he will close the former so that you don't get confused. So that you don't get confused. That's why you realize when you're about to enter somewhere, some people begin to leave you. To create space. 
Don't prophesy their comeback. Prophesy their departure. They are creating space. When God wanted to take Elijah to the woman who will feed him, he had to dry the brook and to stop the ravens from accessing Elijah. Closed doors are not missed opportunities. When people desert you, go to God and say, give me direction. You need to remember that people come in our lives in stages. And these are the three stages why people come in our lives. One, they come for a season, they come for a reason, or they come for life. Non, some people will not help you forever. They will help you for a particular season and they will close that chapter. And God will introduce new people. Every country I go to, whether near or far, my means of transport are catered for. Years ago, when I started coming to this country, I never used to fly in here. I used to come with a bus. I remember those days. Somebody said the good old days. Then you arrive from Kampala. You arrive at a Kamba bus station. What is the name of the road? God help me. Latema Road. Then there used to be no mobile phones. But there were boxes where we used to throw coins. How many of you have ever seen that? Then you would throw your coins. Sometimes my coins would be eaten before I have spoken. Then you call and say, hello. I have arrived. Then you would take you to wherever you were going. And even then, I had people who used to provide bus fare for me. But when God wanted to upgrade it, I began seeing the bus fare anointing leaving. They left me. Now, you can imagine if I clung to the bus fare people, I wouldn't have preached to you now. I'd be so exhausted. You imagine you sit in the bus, you arrive in Nairobi, the nature of my ministry today I can't handle it with bus seriously because I want to live here then go to South Africa you want to go to Dubai you want to go to some other place you want you can't handle it with buses so when the bus fare people are leaving lift both hands and say goodbye may you receive the anointing of goodbye every level God wants to take you to it has people who can manage it if I go back to the bus fair people and tell them I'm going to Jamaica they will, and I want to at my air ticket, they will begin to say he's proud. Didn't God say preach in season and out of season? They have scriptures. The enemy will always give scriptures to people to defend themselves. So instead of me causing those people to begin to speak funny things, better leave them. Now I'm at the level of air tickets. Now I'm up. One day I will upgrade. And I own my own jet. So that I'm not limited. Transiting. You know. Then they call me. The flight is cancelled. They don't cancel. You just enter your jet. And preach this mighty gospel. Amen. 
Every time doors close, they are not closing because God hates you. They are closing because where God wants you to go, the people who have helped you at this level cannot handle. He cannot. Leave them and run. Tell your neighbor, run. 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 They cannot handle where you are. They can't handle the next level. Everything you try to do, they will think you are proud. Because that is not where they are. Yet there is a man God is going to introduce in, in your life. And your problem will look like a cup of tea for him. You try to bring your budget, he will begin to tell you, Ah, shut up. Can we talk something else? Do you have any other thing for us to talk? Huh? <laughs> oh. When people leave, sometimes it is not because of the devil. It is because of a new season that is coming. The people used to handle me then. They can't handle me now. They can't buy designer suits. Cannot. But there are those who buy and they don't feel anything in their wallet. They call you, I'm in Germany. Where are you? I'm in a Georgia man store. What do you want? What do they have? I've just seen their t-shirts. One t-shirt is going for $500. How many do you want? I want 10. <laughs> and they buy. They do what? I have gone to places where they tell me my money is, not, is valueless. The moment I arrive, they tell me, Apostle, we welcome you. Now, from now on, your money is valueless until you will leave. It is our money that has value. People are buying you chapati on the street. Cannot do that. How many of you love the black preacher? One time I was in Kampala and they told me, Apostle, we want to take, take you for holiday. I went. Then I came back. Another group said, we also want to take you for holiday. I asked, where are you taking me? They said, don't worry. Don't worry. Ha! They took me to a place where they were paying for me per night to thousand dollars per night per night. how much is that one seventy thousand and i'm like okay okay my room was almost discharged because it had six toilets <laughs> serious six phones a huge lobby. I mean, uh, and then the demon from Runyenges began to remind me. <laughs> began to remind me. <laughs> this is a week. How much is that? <laughs> Why didn't they give you this money? God is smart. They pay. They don't give you money. They pay. Because he knows if the moment they give you that money, oh God. You see the way I'm opposed my angel? If they give me cash. 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 Liquid. Green dollars. I would, I would have told them I've gone too fast. 
But God went ahead of me. And he said, <laughs> he said, boy, you can sleep here. When I left that country, I'm to the airport, I'm thinking, gosh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever doors close, it is a sign that a new door is opening. Stop crying and begin to worship God for the new door that is opening for you. Job said, when I look to the left, I cannot see him. To the right, I can't but behold him. Yet he knows everything that concerns me. And when he threw with me, I will come out as pure God. God is up to something in your life. How many I'm remaining with? These ones I will not explain much. You are going to write. I promised how many. So far we have covered how many. Glory. At least I'm remaining with two. Ah. Ah, wait, wait. Leave me alone now. Leave me alone now. Hey, three, hey, they are right. Huh? <laughs> Have you heard what she has said? Number one, seven. Come on. Okay, number six. Sign that God is taking you into a new door is what we discussed yesterday. It is called honor. He will present you a person you need to honor. And when you honor that person, the door will open. That is how it works. Never forget what I've said. Whenever God is ushering you into a new season, he will allow you to meet a person you will honor. And that person will be the key to open the new door. Abraham was a man of war. One time he was coming from war in Genesis 13. Bible says he met a man called Melchizedek. Melchizedek looked at him and he blessed him. And Abraham honored him with his tithe. From that time until the day Abraham met Jehovah, he never fought another war. Are you hearing me? Whenever God wants you to go into a new season, he will cook a man and he will present him to you. When you honor that person, it will mean that you have honored your new season. So don't take people lightly. Do not take people lightly. Yesterday I said some people, was it yesterday? I said some people are not people. They are keys. They are keys. They don't they look like human beings, but they are not. They are keys. Number seven. Because Honor we covered it a lot the other day. Number seven. principle that God is going to use is this. I usually put it this way. You can provoke a new season in your life with your seed. You can provoke a new season in your life with your seed. Acts chapter 10 an angel meets Cornelius and he said, Cornelius, listen. Your giving and your prayer, they have made a memorial before God. And I'm sent from the presence of God to deliver this good news. You can provoke a new season in your life with your seed. 
preaching in Nigeria, Dr. T.L. Osborne came after preaching Archbishop Idahosa who happened to be his spiritual son was driving him. So when he drove him to the airport, Archbishop Idahosa said he thought that the white man was going to give him a lot of money. Leaving the airport, when he said bye-bye to his daddy, a white man, Dr. Osborne pulled out five dollars. And that is what he gave to him. Going back very disappointed because he thought he was going to get money from a white man. The spirit of the Lord began to speak to him. Benson, those are not five dollars. Those are five keys. They are going to turn your life and minister around. And one of those keys is giving. My servant has not given you five dollars. He has given you five keys. God was communicating to this preacher that Benson, you can provoke a new season in your life with your seed. With your seed. Seeds are that powerful. Never underestimate a giver. He can become anything, anywhere. You can count how many seeds are in one orange. But you cannot count how many oranges are in one seed. Seeds are powerful. I have seen men turn destines around by sowing. Hannah prayed and she accompanied it with a seed and said, if you give me a male child, Lord, I'll give him back to you. And heaven opened. You can provoke a new season in your life with your seed. Every time you see things hardening in ministry, look for a seed. A great preacher in Nigeria was troubled in his ministry. And the ministry that time was at uh, 30,000. And his associates wanted to split it. And as he's troubled, he began to think. And the Lord told him these words. Look for a ministry that has never had splits, that has been peaceful, and plant your seed there. He looked around Nigeria, he could not find that ministry. He flew to America. And he looked for the ministry of Dr. Kenneth Hagin. He took his seed in that ministry. He did not tell the boys who were becoming tough. When he took that seed there, the young men who were splitting the ministry were aware that the bishop has gone to America, but they didn't know what he had gone to do. When he planted that seed, by the time he's coming back, the young men were aware that he's coming back. They all drove to the airport to receive back their bishop. They didn't know what he had done. But he, does, he had silenced wars with his seed. Amen. And the ministry stood still. You can provoke a new season in your life with your seed. Whoever tells you never to give is a robber of destiny. I have lived a giving lifestyle. Every time I'm troubled and I want change, I plant seeds. Because the Bible says your seed will possess the gates of your enemies. 
It says your seed will possess the gates of those who hate you. There was a war in Israel. And during that war, Israel prevailed against this king. I think it was the king of Moab. This king knew how to sacrifice to the devil. Not to God, the devil. The Bible says when he saw, you will read it, it is there in the book of, I think, 2 Kings. When he saw that the battle was fierce, he took his elder son, who was supposed to be his heir. And the Bible says he sacrificed him to the, on the wall. And Israel was weakened. Because Israel was fighting without sacrifice. The devil prevailed that day. By operating the right principle. You can provoke a new season in your life. With your sin. I fear givers. I even tremble when I look at them. In this kingdom. Givers have a special place. You didn't hear what I said. In this kingdom. Givers have a special place. You can provoke a new season. I have a friend, a lady friend. She got married, but could not give birth to children. She could not bear children. People talk. Africans can talk, and you know they are not busy. They can talk. As they are talking, she was giving. She went round Kampala giving to every church. I introduced her to a certain church. She bought chairs. She bought the choir, the, the choir, uh, uh, choir uniform. She roofed the church. She, she did things to that church. And then she went to town. Began to shop, to shop for the baby. She packed a whole suitcase. For the lady, for the girl, but baby and for the boy. That year she began to give birth to children. My goodness. Until she said enough. You can provoke a new season in your life with your seed. Don't wait to be given. Wait. Start giving. Start giving. You can stop wars. Let me teach you now. You can stop battles. Spiritual warfare sometimes and most of the time is won with your seed. Whenever you attack a man and that man takes a seed in the presence of God, you are in trouble. The moment he lifts his seed like this, you are finished. You are finished. That is what happened in Genesis 18. You read from verse 1 to 8. Genesis 27. Verse 1 to 3. Jacob provoked a new season with a seed. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 9 to 17. The last one, then I will go and begin to think of what I will eat tonight after preaching so well. How many of you want me to eat well tonight? Don't take me out. Because I will milk your wallet dry. Believe me. Now, tell your neighbor you can provoke a new season in your life with your sin. The last one, somebody say last. The last sign that God is up to something new in your life is discouragement. You begin to become weary. A sense of weariness. You hate everything. You are like God. Am I cast or am I what? I'm, Discouragement is a prophecy.
weariness. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13, God, Jesus speaks about the ten virgins. And he says the five were wise and the other five were when the bride was about to come, the foolish went out to look for oil. By the time they are coming back, they waited for the bride. He wasn't coming. Let's go. They came back when the season had expired. I pray for you never to wake up when your season has expired. You didn't know what I've said now. Lift up your hand. I'm praying for you in the name of the Son of the Living God, Jesus Christ. May you never wake up when your season has expired. It shall never happen in Jesus' name. You will always be on time all the days of your life. Glory to God. I want us to read this scripture. It will, it will be my final scripture. Two scriptures actually. 2 Kings 19 verse 1 to 4. Listen. And he sent Eliakim. Where are you? And it came to pass. When King Ezekiah had it. Amen. That he rained his clothes. And he did what? Covered himself. Continue with sackcloth. And went into the house of the Lord. Continue. And he sent Eliakim which was over the household and Shebna the scribe and the elders of the priests covered with sackcloth to Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos. And they said unto him thus says Ezekiah. Now when you are reading this be, most, be slower. Continue. This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke. And of blasphemy. For the children have come to back. And there is no strength. To bring them forth. It is time to deliver. But the strength is lacking. That is a powerful scripture. Discouragement is a sign. that God is ushering you into a new season. When you become weary, it means children have come to birth. When you lack all strength, that is a sign that heaven is at the door. Go tell Isaiah, we have a problem here. The season is here, but the strength is not there. May you receive strength. Receive strength from God. Amen. To give back to your new season in Jesus name. Amen. Somebody say I receive strength. I receive strength. Oh you don't prophesy well. Say I am receiving strength tonight. I strength tonight. To give back to a new season in my life. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. And let it be in the name of the Lord. Amen. May you receive strength today. Amen. You will give back to that new season. Amen. Children have come to birth. But the power. Receive power. Amen. Receive the anointing to deliver. Receive the grace to give birth Amen. to your next level, Amen. to your next breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall not die. 
before you enter your new season in Jesus name I cancel accidents I cancel swords the bullet will not kill you the accident will not kill you may you live and enter into a new season the Bible says when Herod heard about a new season he said every child below two years die and the angel came and told the man they listen Joseph rise and go down may God create a way of escape so that he can preserve your season may the angels of God know you by name to move you from the herald who want to terminate your season I cover you in the blood of Jesus that is speaking better promises than the blood of animals be covered from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet you will enter that new season I see a new season knocking at your door now before this year is over you will lift your hands and say look what the Lord has done Lord I give you praise let's read Galatians 6 verse 9 and we close our Bibles Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 Let's read together. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God bless you. Hallelujah. In due season we shall harvest if we don't faint. May you receive fresh oil. May you receive fresh anointing. May you receive fresh oil for your new season. Fresh anointing is on you for your new season. Your feet are anointed. Your head is anointed. Your knees are anointed. Your eyes are anointed. Your mouth is anointed. The king is your friend. In the name of Jesus.